Long legs and Brussels Long legs. Say so good without a doubt. Green sprouts and cabbages. Boil them, fry them, steam and stir. White cabbages and leaves. Doesn't matter how you eat. Cook them after harvest time. Those vegetables are mighty fine. Hello children, hello everybody. Welcome to the very first online field trip of the new year. Happy new year. I'm Sam and today I'm joined by a leak expert. This is our leak expert, Charlie. Hello, Charlie. Hi, Sam. How are you? I'm very well, thank you very much. Now, today we were supposed to be in Wales, but because of all the heavy rain we've had across the UK over the last few weeks, our field got flooded. So we've now hopped back over the border and today we're in Telford in Shropshire which is in the west of England. Now, as you can see, we are still in a field and we're surrounded by all of these gorgeous green plants that are just popping through the soil. And all of these plants are what we've come here to learn about today. Lovely long leeks. Now, Charlie, we can see from that shot, the leeks just go for miles, don't they? How many have we got in here? Believe it or not, there's about six million leeks in this field. Six million leeks, that's crazy. And it's so huge, this field, isn't it? It is. It's Just to give you an idea, it's about the same size as 60 football pitches. Whoa! So one football pitch is huge, so 60 football pitches next to each other. Yeah. And that's how big it is. Yeah. Do you fancy a game of football? A bit cold, really. It is a bit cold, isn't it, for football? Let's learn yeah. about leeks instead. Give us a wave and a cheer in your classrooms, children, if you're learning, looking forward to learning all about lovely long leeks today. So let's meet you one by one now. Let's go over to our first school. Let's go to Sedgley Park. They're in Manchester and it's Miss Royal's class taking part. Hello, children. Great to have you with us. Let's go to Ainsley Wood now. They're in Essex. And it's Miss Abernethy's class taking part. Hello, everybody. Let's go to uh, Moulton Chapel now. They're in Lincolnshire. Hello, Mr Warner's class. And finally, let's go over to St. Colin Major in Cornwall, where we have Mr. Cornish's class taking part. Hello, children. <laughs> what a great bunch we have joining us today. They're very lively. What are we going to learn today then, Charlie? Well, today we are going to learn all about leeks. They're a lovely, nutritious vegetable. So we're going to learn how we grow them how we harvest them, we're going to learn how we eat them, we're going to learn the group of plants that they are from, and we're also going to learn about the fact that they are the national symbol of Wales. Wow, so we should pretty much know everything there is to know about leeks at the end of this online well, field that's... trip, aren't we? So first of all, most importantly, what is a leek, Charlie? So, <clears throat> this is a leek. A leek is a, it's a vegetable. You can chop it up and you can eat it. Great stuff. Now, when people talk about leeks, they often refer to them as a winter vegetable. Is that because we eat them mainly in winter? Mainly in winter, but they grow and we can eat them all the year round. But the, why they're called a winter vegetable is because they're very, very hardy. Right, OK. So they've got tough leaves here. OK, so let's have a little feel. Yes, they are. And, and then these are winter vegetables here as well, aren't yeah, they? And so they are they, all... They've all got really, really tough leaves. The kale there, for example, if you scrunch that in your hand you can see how how tough it is great and they're they're from a particular family aren't they leeks the allium family that's right is that right what's so special about the allium family the the allium family are a, a group of um, plants which which have a, a distinctive kind of flavor and distinctive kind of smell and other members of this family that you've obviously got the leeks we have spring onions we have shallots we have the normal onions, we have chives and garlic, to name but a few. Wow. And these are all things that you would put in your recipe and they'd give them a, such a nice flavour, wouldn't they? Yeah, Very flavourful. Exactly. And then one thing I notice about all of these is they have lots of layers as well, don't they, Charlie? Yeah. So if we take an, an onion as a, as a good example, this onion here, it, you can see how you can just peel all the layers off it like that, like, like we, we're used to doing. 
but you can do the same with a leak as well. So if I get this leak here, we can just peel. Oh, wow, yeah. So that's just a long layer, isn't it? It's the same yep. as the onion. The onions are round, round layers and these are long layers. Yep. Now, the one thing that I think is a bit different here is the chives, they don't seem to have layers. They don't seem to have layers, but this is the, this is the leaf coming out of the top. But if you dug down underneath the chive, you'd find that they were very, very small bulbs. They're almost like very, very tiny onions. And so they would have layers as well. Oh, fascinating stuff. And then in the summertime, I have a lovely purple flower in my garden called an allium. Are they related as well to this family? Yep, that is also part of this family. In fact, if you left this field, and if we didn't harvest this field and you came back here, let's say in June, the whole field would be a sea of purple. Oh, that would be amazing. That would look so good, but obviously not good for you because you won't have harvested the leeks. No, oh. <laughs> exactly. So if we were to see a purple flower like the one we just saw in our garden, it would, it's more than likely be, it would be an allium? It would be an allium, but what you need to remember is it's not necessarily an edible allium. Yeah, best to stay clear and it, Correct. Could be, it could be anything as well. Yes. Now, I've been having a little mooch around your field because, of course, you've got loads of lovely leeks behind. But around the borders of the field, I, I found this uh, strange looking thing here, Charlie. So what is that? Is this an allium too? No, this is what's left of a sunflower. Oh, OK. So what we do, the same time that we, we put the seed for the leeks in the ground, we also put seed for sunflowers around the outside. When the sunflowers grow and they come into those bright yellow flowers that we see in the summer, they provide feed for birds, um, bees, sorry, and other insects. Oh, OK. And then in the winter, you get these seeds inside that you can see there. And, um, and then all the birds that live in the hedgerows, they can eat these throughout the winter. Oh, fantastic. So what would happen if you didn't plant these? The birds would have to go elsewhere to find some seed. Oh, wow. So they're very, very important. This field kind of looks after itself, really, doesn't it? Oh, apart yeah. from the worker. <laughs> <Apart from me. laughs> <laughs> Great stuff. We're learning so much already. Yep. Before we learn some more, though, I know that our children have prepared before today's online field trip and used all the resources online to learn about leaks. So I'd love to go over to uh, Sedgley Park, first of all. And if someone could come up and tell me their favourite leak fat, that would be fabulous. I've just heard that we've just lost Sedgley Park, so if we can go to Ainsley Wood and get your leak fat. What have you enjoyed learning about the most, children? Um, my name is Anthony, and leeks are part of the animal family, along with onions, 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 onions and garlic. That's great. So Ainsley Park have learnt that leeks are part of the Allium family, along yeah. with onions, shallots, uh, garlic and spring onions. Yeah, so that's what right. we've just learned already. So yeah. well done, children. Great fact. Let's go to Sledgley, Sledgley Park now. I think we have them back on. So what have you learned about uh, leeks? I'm afraid we're still having problems with Sedgley Park there, but we had a great fact from Ainsley there. So let's get uh, learn more about the Allium family now, because I was fascinated with what we've already learned. So here's a short video all about what an Allium is. What is an Allium? Have you ever wondered why some vegetables look and taste similar to each other? For example, why do you think it is that carrots and parsnips look alike? And why do broccoli and cauliflower look so similar? Well, just like animals can be grouped together, such as the lion and the cheetah, which are both cats, and the salmon and the shark, which are both fish, plants too belong to groups of similar plants. Carrots and parsnips both belong to the group we know as root vegetables, and broccoli and cauliflower are both part of the group we call brassicas. Leeks also belong to a group, and we call this group alliums. Allium is the Latin word for garlic, which gives you a big clue as to which other vegetables might belong to this group. The allium group includes vegetables such as onions, shallots, spring onions, chives, and of course, garlic and leeks. Did you know that these vegetable plants also grow flowers? These are the flowers of the garlic plant. And these flowers belong to the chive plant. You can see that they look very similar. 
And have you ever seen these beautiful flowers growing in a garden? These also belong to the Allium group, and so gardeners call them Alliums. But they don't have any tasty parts for us to eat. What other similarities do you notice between vegetables in the Allium group? Leeks and spring onions look rather similar, don't you think? And onions and leeks both have lots of layers. And have you ever peeled garlic and noticed that its skin is also made up of lots of layers? One thing that alliums definitely all have in common is that the parts we cook and eat as vegetables are all tasty and healthy. Welcome back children, we hope you enjoyed that. Give us a wave and a cheer in your classrooms if you did. great stuff now as you can see we've moved further down the field and that's so that we can take a look at this amazing huge machine behind us we're going to take a closer look at that in just a second it's very exciting indeed but first of all i know that you've been experimenting in your classrooms before today's online field trip learning all about allium so i'd love to know how you got on and what your results were so if we can go to molten chapel first and if someone can come up to me and tell me what you investigated that would be great hi today we were looking at all different vegetables and we noticed it and we were looking at what the sample of coconut was and what the flower was and Great stuff. So, Molten Chapel learnt that garlic had the strongest smell out of all the alliums. Ooh, I can imagine that. Yeah, it's, 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 uh, it's quite so, uh, smelly, isn't it? <laughs> really, really great work. Let's go to St. Colum Major. Can someone come up and tell me what you investigated and which allium had the most layers? Great stuff. So Oliver at St. Colin Manor learnt that leeks had the most layers out of all oh, of the allium yeah. family. That's interesting. I never knew that. Nice work. Well, you've, very, you've been very scientific in your classrooms and learnt all about allium. So great work. Time to learn a little bit more about this machine now because uh, you can hear it's quite noisy behind us. Lots of people working on it. So what is this, Charlie? This, this is basically the means by which we get the leeks from a growing crop in the field get the bits cut off, get them cut down to size, get them washed, and then get them ready for you and I to eat. Wow, so effectively, this machine is like a big leak factory moving up and down the fields, isn't it? You've got it in one, that's exactly what it is. So what's the first part of the process then? Well, the first part, if I could show you, the first part of the process is to get the leaks out of the ground. So what we do is we pull them out of the ground like this, shake a bit of the soil off, then we chop there, and then you, the old leaves, which we're not interested in, we'll take them off. Take that off like that. We'll do one more, because I've damaged it when I was harvesting it. And then I will cut it to more or less the length of the knife. Great. And that's it. And that is kind of the, the size of the leak that we're used to seeing in, in stores, isn't it? Yes. So that's pretty much no more cutting will take place. But exactly. why do you do that in the field? Why don't you just dig up the leaks and take them to a factory? Well, if you look, if you look at these leaks here, if we were to pull them up like this and take them to the factory, there is... That's waste. That's waste. That there is waste and all this top is waste. So we would be transporting an awful lot of waste back to the factory and then back here. So instead of that, we leave all the waste here and then <coughs> it will break down, it will rot down into the soil and we can use it then as um, fertilizer and compost for the following crop. Wow, that's amazing. That's fantastic. So how many leaks do you harvest? Generally, this, this machine will do about 50,000 leaks a day. A day? That is... 50,000, yeah. 50,000 leaks a day, that's crazy. So if you put, if you put them all end to end like that, they would, they would stretch 15 kilometres. Wow, that is far. <laughs> that's a lot of leaks, that's a lot of leaks. OK, so, so they're going on this conveyor belt round here. here. We've put them on the basket like this. Yeah. They go round, round the basket. 
you can see they go along, so it's, it's, a, it's a long conveyor, if you like, because we have, we have 12 people working on the front here, and then they go up there, and they go up into the inside of the machine. Once, once they get inside the machine, they get lots of jets of water on them just to wash that little bit of mud that you saw when I was chopping them, just to wash all that off. They come through and then we have people in here who are grading them and putting them into trays like wow. this. Wow, so these are the, the finished products once they've that, that gone is the through finished that process product. in there. And they all look nice and clean and that's just ready just to go to the stores now. That's, that's two things that can happen to this. It can either go to the stores and when you go to the supermarket and you pick up a leak individually, that's what you'll pick up. Or we take them to a factory where we just put them in packets. We don't do anything else to the leaks apart from putting them in a packet. Fabulous. Great. Well, thank you so much, Charlie. Time to take a closer look at the whole process now. In this short video, leaks farm to fork. Leaks from farm to fork. Leeks are often thought of as a winter vegetable because they can grow here in the United Kingdom even in the cold weather. Other vegetables that can survive the winter months include Brussels sprouts and leafy green vegetables such as kale and savoy cabbage. The leaf seeds are planted in the field between March and May, when plenty of rain and slightly warmer weather helps the seeds to germinate. To plant the seeds, the farmer uses a tractor with a special piece of machinery called a seed drill attached to the back. Also attached to the tractor is a bed maker which prepares the soil ready for the seeds to be planted. The drill ensures that all the seeds are planted at the correct depth and the correct distance apart. You can see on this wheel the little seeds, ready to be drilled into the freshly prepared soil. By July, the leeks are ready to be harvested, and the farmer will continue to harvest the leeks throughout the winter months until the following May. To harvest the leeks, a team of staff work together in the field, as well as inside this large mobile packing vehicle, which is called a rig. First, the people in the field pull the leeks from the ground, cut off the top and bottom, and remove the outer layer. They then place the leeks onto this conveyor belt on the front of the rig. The leeks are then carried up and into the rig, where they are washed, trimmed and checked, before being put into crates. The crates of leeks are stacked onto pallets and then taken away in a trailer. Next, the leeks are taken to the pack Here they are weighed into bundles of two or three and then wrapped in plastic inside this machine. <laughs> Lastly, they are loaded onto a lorry, ready to be sent to the shop so you can enjoy them with your dinner. Welcome back, children. Give us a wave and a cheer in your classrooms if you enjoyed that video. Yay! Great stuff. Now, Charlie, of course, today we were supposed to be in Wales and still yeah. it started raining and flooded the field. Uh, leaks are very important in Wales, aren't they? They are. They are. They are, our, they are in fact, our national symbol. And why is that? A national emblem. Well, there's a couple of uh, legends about the use of leeks. The first one is that um, Saint Cadwallader of Gwynedd, which is a, a county in the northwest of Wales, he had a battle against the Saxons. And so what he decided to do was he told all of his soldiers to wear a leek in their helmets, a bit like this. Ah. So when you had, when you were, when they were in war, they knew not to attack anybody 
who'd got a leak in the helmet. Well, that's very clever, isn't it? Yeah. Very clever indeed. And the other, the other, um, the other legend is that St David, who is the patron saint of Wales, when he was uh, going through his religious fasts, he only ate leeks for 30 days. Wow, that's a lot of leeks. So 30 days of eating it. I like leeks, but I couldn't eat leeks only for 30 days. Not even I could. <laughs> um, and then when I do think of Wales as well, I think of daffodils. Why is that? Well, daffodils are our, our national flower. And um, in the Welsh language, a leek is known as a kenin, and daffodils are known as kenin pedder. Oh, so very similar indeed. Very similar in their names, yes. Oh, fascinating stuff. Now, I know the English national emblem is a rose. Yeah. And in Scotland, it's a thistle, and Ireland is a shamrock. I haven't got a clue why, though. I was trying to wrap my no brains way. earlier, so I think the children might know. And if you don't know children, perhaps you could do some research as well. And if you do find out, we'd love to hear from you as well. So perhaps you can get in touch via Twitter and share with us why we have the national em em emblems that we do. Um, now, Charlie, I think I'd like to find out a little bit more about how we enjoy leeks uh, for food as well. So you must eat quite a lot of leeks. What's I your favourite? <laughs> my favourite recipe is cheesy leeks. Oh, cheesy leeks sounds so lovely. It's basically, a, it's really, really simple. It's a white sauce, put two or three leeks into it, and then melt as much cheese as you can into that, sprinkle some cheese on the top, put it under the grill. That's, oh, that's, that's it. so nice. And we've got some other leaky products here, haven't we? Yep, so what have we got here? Here we have um, leek and potato soup. That's a very thick, chunky soup, lovely for, for days like this, really. And then we have um, cockaliki, and that is a, a Scottish recipe, and that's got leeks and chicken in it. Lovely. And for vegetarians who still want a sausage, there are cheese and leek sausages as well. Oh, they sound quite they tasty. Do. I've never tasted them, but they look very nice. And what's Welsh cowl? Cowl is a, um, it's a stew that's got potatoes, carrots, swedes, parsnips and because it's Welsh it's got lots of leeks in it and obviously lamb in it as well wow. and again very nice on a day like this. Yeah it sounds like a really hearty dish doesn't it so once yeah. you've been outside freezing because I can't feel my toes right now <laughs> it's kind of dish you'd want when you got inside isn't absolutely, it? Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Um, and children of course we must remember that leeks are low in fat and they do count as one of your five a day as well. They're a source of vitamin B1 which we need for our hearts to function normally vitamin b6 which helps us reduce tiredness and helps our immune system and vitamin c which will also help uh, keep our immune systems working properly as well as being important for energy productions and our bones as well and um, we've learned so much from you today charlie i think it's now time for our children to ask you a few questions oh, okay. is that all right yep. so if we can go over to ainsley wood first of all um, and see if miss abernethy's class has, has, has any questions for you Let's find out. I think that was Matilda. Matilda would like to know how many leek farms there are in the UK. I'm not sure how many leek farms there are in the UK, but there are about 6,000 acres of leeks grown in the UK. So again, an acre is a football pitch, so that's 6,000 football pitches. Wow, that's a lot of leeks that we, uh, that we yeah. eat here. Really great question. Let's go to Moulton uh, Chapel Primary now. Could you repeat that one more time, please, Alex? Wow, that, this is such a great question, Alex. This is a question that I would love to know as well. So, Charlie, why, when you cut an onion, do you cry, but then if you cut a spring onion, you don't cry? Well, in all the alliums, there is a, um, a sulphur... A, a sulfur chemical, a, a, a chemical, and that comes out of the, as a gas, out of the uh, onions and gets into your eyes and, and it just irritates them. And, and so that's, then the eyes create the tears. And the, an, an onion like this would be a lot older when it is harvested 
than an onion like this. So it's had more time to build up. So there's oh, more. OK. So it's just the chemical gas, that, the chemical yeah. that's coming out. What a really great question. And I've learned something today. Let's go over to St. Cullen Major now. What would you like to ask Charlie? That's a really great question. So why did their classroom still smell of alliums 24 hours after cutting them? It's almost the same answer as the, the previous question. It was, it's because of these, um, these smelly sulphur compounds and they hang around in the air quite a lot. But it's a nice smell, isn't it? Yeah, it is a nice smell, yes. Very, very nice. And we have, in fact, uh, lost, lost Sedgley Park. So um, I have a question um, from Miss Royal's class for you. So how long did it take for a leek to grow from when the seed is planted? OK, so here's the leek seed here. And we put seed like this mm -hmm. in this field in, on the 15th of April last year. So, so they're so tiny that the seeds are, so, aren't they? Yeah, it's, so it's taken them nine months to get to this stage. So, so you plant a seed and then nine months later you have a leek that you can eat and, exactly. and enjoy. Yeah. Wow, so it's pretty fast then. Yeah, yeah. Great, so really great questions, everybody. You've obviously really got really interested in alliums and leeks. One last question uh, for you from me, Charlie. What's the best thing about your job? I, I enjoy lots of things about my job, but I think probably the thing that that excites me the most is I can take seeds like this. So I can take this seed here, I can put it into the ground, and nine months later, I've produced this. And I think there's something quite magical about doing that. There is, yes. Yeah, it must be so fulfilling. And we enjoy leeks, so keep up the good work of Thank growing you. them for us. Thank you, Charlie. We've come to the end of this online field trip, I'm afraid. But don't forget, children, you can sign yourself up for a school farm to fork trail. You'll learn so much about where your food comes from. And at the same time, you'll have lots of fun too, just like the children are having on the screen right now. Everything you need to know is on our website. So get yourself signed up for that as well and make sure that you enjoy your day out. Um, but thank you so much for joining us and learning all about leeks today. It's goodbye from myself and Charlie in this leek field. And we'll see you next time. Cheerio. Goodbye, everybody. <laughs> goodbye, Anthony Wood. Goodbye, Moulton Chapel. And goodbye, St. Colin Major. And goodbye, Sedgley Park as well. Thank you so much all for taking part. And if you'd like to join us on our next online field trip, we'll be uh, doing that on the 4th of February. Hopefully we'll be in Wales this time. And we're going to be learning all about sprinkly salt. So make sure you join us for that. And don't forget, we've got dozens of these online field trips on our website, ready for you to watch. And some great resources as well, ready for you to download. So get stuck into those and we'll see you very soon. Goodbye. <laughs>